Welcome to This Week in Sim Racing, June 24th, 2011 edition. I'm Jessica Lopez. And I'm Darren Ganji. And This Week in Sim Racing is sponsored by iRacing.com. Get three months for the price of one as an introductory offer by heading to our website at InsideSimRacing.tv and clicking on any of the iRacing banners you see. And first up, Jessica, welcome to This Week in Sim Thank Racing, you. your first appearance. I know a lot of our fans have been waiting to see you on this show, and um, it's been a while since you and I have co-hosted I know, show. it has. Very Always cool. enjoyable. Glad yep. to be here. We're going to start things off with iRacing, who has just released their nationwide car, and it's available for everyone to get out there and run. Along with the new tire model that Dave Kemmer has been working on for over 18 months. Matter of fact, iRacing members, make sure to go read the forum post by Dave. In it, he talks about the new tire model and how it behaves. It's available for some sanctioned racing, the B-class cars at Road America this week, and for some fun racing, the car will be alternating at Homestead and Michigan. You can also run in the Race King 300 that we mentioned here on the show a few weeks back and try to win this button box. The new tire model will be available on all the cars in August when iRacing 2.0 is released. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I drove the new tire model last night at Road America, and man, that car is a handful, but definitely feels more realistic, so I'm looking forward to running it more. Next up, Live for Speed news. Uh, they released patch version 0.6b, and it contains some new improvements. Some of those include a new free view mode and layout editor, improved collisions with objects, barriers, cars, pit, and the garage exit. You can now place up to 800 objects to create circuits, adjustable tire warmers for hot lapping, plus many other fixes and improvements. The full change log can be found in the LFS forums by going to lfs.net. Alrighty, Simfin has released a new update for Race 07 and all of the titles associated with it in order to accommodate their retro pack. The pack was originally scheduled to release over a month ago, but they realized there were some issues and the patch addresses them by adding support for hill climb, bringing new smoke effects, and some other fixes as well. The retro pack is now available for download and adds on these new cars, or actually, old cars. The 68 Volvo Amazon, the 72 Volvo P1800, 71 BMW 2002, 68 Mini Cooper S, 71 Opel Commodore GS 3001, 73 BMW 3.0 CSL, 74 Corvette, and a 70 Camaro. The included tracks are the Poznan and the Hill Climb track, which is the first ever an ISI-based title. Templates for the cars are available as well, and we have a link for them here and the Retro Pack in the description of our show. The Retro Pack sells for €4.99, Euro, and you can get that at raceroom.net or Steam, and you must have Race 07 or any of the titles associated with it in order to take advantage of that. I'm looking forward to trying that, especially the Camaro and the Hill Climb. And actually, all those cars sound really cool, the old school stuff, so sounds like fun. Well, that's going to wrap up the first half of our show. It's time for us to take a commercial break. When we return, we have some iRacing World Championship coverage. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Welcome back to This Week in Sim Racing, and next up we have some NASCAR iRacing World Championship Series coverage, and they headed to Michigan International Speedway for round 10 of 18. Ray Alfala led the points by 24 over Thomas Hazard with Brad Wright, Tyler Hudson, and our driver Brian Schoenberg rounding out the top five. Steve Sheehan sat on the pole after winning the week before at Pocono. Could he make it two in a row and be the first to do so this season and maybe crack the top 10 in points? Sheehan was 13th heading into Michigan. 43 drivers took the green flag and it stayed that way until lap 13 when at least five cars were caught up in this melee. Lap 18 there was another caution where Schoenberg lost the handle on cold tires and got into Nolan Scott. On lap 27 the third and one of the most important cautions of the night was started by Derek Wood when he got in the back of John Gorlinski. Almost the entire top 10 in points was involved in it. Starting with points leader Ray Alfa Thomas Hazard and Brian Schoenberg to name a few. Alfala wouldn't survive it and parked his ride. 
Then fast forwarding through a few more cautions to a restart with 24 laps to go, Nolan Scott, who was suffering from some damage from that early caution, got loose and lost it at the line and half of the field stacked into it. The last restart was on lap 20 and Steve Sheehan would be the first driver to win back-to-back -back races by beating Derek Wood to the line on lap 4 when the final caution would fly. The wreck on lap 27 would be the biggest story of the day though. Thomas Hazard is now the series leader by seven points over Alfala, and the rest of the top five would remain where they were before the race started. Congratulations to Steve Sheehan for taking back-to-back -back wins and winning the pole at Michigan. The series heads to the One Mile Oval at Loudoun, New Hampshire on July 5th, around 11 of 18. Cool. Well, the iRacing World Championship Series Road Race just went to Sebring International Raceway for round 9 of 18. Klaus Kivikas of My3ID is on top of the standings by 44 points over Hugo Lewis and 48 over Gregor Hutu. Kivikas would defend his points lead by sitting on the pole, followed by Team Redline driver Luke McLean in second, and Gregor started all the way back in sixth. With 35 cars on the grid, the start looked like it would be mayhem, but all the cars got through turn one clean, and only one car went off in turn three to begin their 52 lap drive. Kivikas wouldn't defend his position long, as McLean ended up in front to lead the first lap. Kivikas would make a mistake on lap five and drop two positions. Not long after, Ilka Hapala's race almost came to an end when he got hit by Kivikas by damaging his front wing and putting him back a few laps. Kivikas would go as far back as 17th position from this incident. It would be a two pit stop strategy race with most drivers coming in for their first stop on lap 20. Hugo Lewis would be the guy that had the best strategy of the day after both stops, he found himself in the lead with some cushion. This left the team redline drivers McLean and Hutu clawing their way back to try and catch Lewis. Hutu was suffering from connection problems, which didn't affect the outcome of his race. After struggling early on to find his pace, he ran the fastest lap of the race with two laps to go chasing down Lewis. He was able to chase down McLean, who had basically let his teammate go and try to catch Lewis. But it wouldn't be enough, and Hugo Lewis captured his first win of the season. Kivikas was able to salvage a top 10 finish and maintain his points lead, but not without losing some ground to teammate Hugo Lewis and team redline driver Gregor Hutu. Lewis is now only 17 points back and Hutu is 30. With nine races to go, anything can still happen. Hutu is doing all he can to defend his title and he still has a great shot at doing so. The series head to the Indianapolis F1 circuit on July 2nd. Make sure you tune in to iRacing.com or PSRTV.com and check those races out. Should be some good ones. Next up, if you've been wondering what these pedals are sitting here, these are from ptracing.net. And I'd like to thank Attila Kiss, who I got in touch with through the iRacing forums. And basically what this does, if you've noticed, this is a G25 or G27 set of pedals. Basically it extends the length of the pedals. I'd like to thank Tommy for putting these together for us yesterday, as a matter of fact. And also adds a load cell with some kind of adjustment back here. So these are $159 for the whole kit. Also comes with like a little, uh, almost like a Nixum brake mod. And it takes about three to five weeks for delivery. And again, you can go to ptracing.net and we're gonna have a full review of this set here on the show very soon. That's gonna wrap things up for this week in Sim Racing, June 24th edition. Make sure you check out all of our E3 coverage that we posted last week and our most recent interview with the developers of F1 2011. Actually, our good friends now, Paul and Stephen Hood, had a lot yeah. of fun with that one. Also, don't miss our fanatic interview with Mr. T. <laughs> by the way, if you don't know who Mr. T is by now, go watch some of our old interviews with Thomas Jackermeyer of Fanatic, and you might have a clue of who Mr. T is. But anyway, you got to check that out. Check out NFS The Run, our coverage of Driver San Francisco, and everything we did at E3. Oh, and the Forza Motorsports 4, yep. the party, all that. All right, guys, make sure you go to our website, InsideSimRacing.tv, to check out all of that footage and register and join in on the conversations on our forum page. We love to hear from you. And that's going to do it. Checker flag is out, and so are we.